It is tourist season. Practical, get the job done. Not afraid to get its hands dirty. Not afraid to do the work that needs doing. It's lots of flowers. It's also outside. It's lots of natural things. It really served its earthy purpose. This one is vibes. Vibes only. Do you know what? I think I am just making things up and you shouldn't listen to me. Hello everybody, it's Sylvie. Welcome or welcome back to Tarot Magpie. I hope you're doing good. It is tourist season, which means I'm continuing with my little mini series of tarot decks for each element. This is going to be my selection of earthy decks. I'm not doing them for every zodiac season because that's a little bit too granular for me, but I am doing my earthy earthy decks and some of them definitely remind me of particular signs more than others. I think that's all you need to know as a preamble so I'm gonna get straight into it. I'm gonna start with the obvious ones. I have the Tarot Arcana. <laughs> like I couldn't, it's literally called the Earth Tarot. I couldn't not include this. Obviously earthy colours, I think green and brown. The nails are a coincidence but it works. Um, and, and so, so the green, the green and the gold, it's giving earthy. The gold is giving pentacles, which is of course the earth suit. And then this is a deck full of mammals. This is by Taylor Hulquist Todd, who is creating a deck for each element. I have the ocean and the earth decks. The earth deck is all mammals. And the little guidebook tells you, tells you who's who and why it was chosen. I love the um, pentacles in this deck because there's loads of like little gemstones. What a beautiful Queen of Cups. I love the artwork. I love the colours. I love all the depth. And I think it's really pleasing how she has captured the energy of the animals for the court cards specifically. I just really like how they look. I think the court cards, yeah, you can see in the court cards how they're not completely like natural animals doing natural animal things because this camel has a wand and a crown on. Adore the bats in the sword suit. Um, but it's it's lovely and it's literally it's literally Terra Arcane. It's it's the Earth deck. You see with the gemstones? I think the um maybe it's just the pentacles. I think it's just the pentacles caught, but they're all burrowing mammals. And I think they're just lovely. Like how lovely is that? So that is the the Earth deck. And that's my first most obvious one out of the way. I'm pretty sure I said this in the fire installment of this series that I did in Aries season. I had to go for some obvious ones, but I tried not to just go for all my green decks because that is basically my spring deck selection, which I did like a month or so ago. So the next obvious for me earth deck is the Hercrafters Tarot. And I also personally could also see this as an air deck because there's a lot of, oh hold on, these are my sneak peek of some of my favorite majors because I've got the fool sitting here. This is also an airy deck to me because in a lot of the cards, like we get a lot of, we get a lot of sky and a lot of landscape and that kind of broad view of things, like a horizon, even though it's where the sky meets the, the land or the sea, a horizon is airy to me because it's that big, perspective but this is more an earth deck because the focus is of course on the plants and things that grow from the ground and how to work with those things it's very earthy we've got representation of all the seasons as you can see it's absolutely beautiful i love this deck a lot this deck also has some of my favorite backs i think these are just just lovely but yeah this is this is another obvious choice that i had to include so one of the things i really like about this deck is it's not just like pictures of plants it's also how to craft with each of these with each of these plants and little practices or little like here with the oak make an acorn necklace take a basket weaving class like it's a very tangible way of working with these plants and i think that also lends itself to the earth element being about the kind of material physicality of these plants which I think is wonderful and I think ultimately it's more of an earth deck in that sense although visually this could also be an air deck to me because there's something about something about it that feels kind of airy but ultimately it's it's more earthy so that is the herb crafters tarot we are now moving on to some slightly less obvious choices this is the goddess of love tarot and I say slightly less obvious because this one feels Taurus because it has that obviously Venusian energy being the goddess of love tarot um, and of course Taurus is ruled, ruled? Taurus is ruled by Venus as is Libra but I think this is more 
more earth than air. And I'm not sure really why, but I think because it's so beautiful, I get that kind of luxury sensuality element to it, which I think feels more Taurus than Libra. And it is just a thing of beauty. Like I, I love the analog collage style. In general, I like it in a lot of decks. I have it in a lot of decks. But I think this is just such a beautiful, beautiful deck. I adore this Queen of Swords. And the pearls in the cup suit, all the roses, all the, all the gemstones that we see kind of scattered throughout. But especially in, I think it's the air suit that has a lot of gemstones. The swords. Obviously now, I see no evidence of this. It's there in the pentacles. Maybe I'm thinking of one specific swords card. And I've just extrapolated that out in my in my mind. You know what, I think I am just making things up and you shouldn't listen to me. Regardless, it's a beautiful deck and there's a lot of this green as well. So obviously there's a lot of pink and red, it being like a love goddess deck, but in the pentacle suit especially, there's a lot of really strong bold green and there's a lot of natural elements in the collage artwork. Like we've got all these flowers, we've got landscapes, we've got uh, gemstones, which are, I suppose you could argue that they're not fully like super, not supernatural, but super natural um, because they've been cut, they've been refined, they've been tampered with, but they are still a, they are still something that comes from the earth. So I feel like there's a lot of earth bound elements in the collage of this deck specifically, which again connects it to the, the, the physical, tangible, material world in my view, in the way I think about it. So that is the Goddess of Love Tarot. This is also going to be my... Taurus daily draw deck that I do. I do a little mini deck study every month. I pull a card a day. I take a note from the guidebook and the goddess of love is going to be my Taurus deck because, because of the Venusian vibes and it feels, it feels earthy. So I haven't started working with it yet. I'm a few days behind because I've been redecorating my house to get ready to move out of it. So that has been taking up literally all of my energy. Um, but I've, I've got some spare time after I've after I filmed and edited and uploaded this I should have some spare time and I'm going to catch up on my tarot journals because I've been really missing playing with cards and journaling my tarot pulls. Anyhow that is the goddess of love. The fifth spirit tarot is such a grounding deck for me that it's it's got to be it's got to be in my earth decks. I feel like this represents the real world. This represents the real world and the people in it and the, the miners are kind of pippish and I feel like they also represent the real world. Like it's, it's a fire and it's candles. Sure, this bird has been stabbed, but it's with like, like pins that you use for sewing. Like it looks kind of everyday. And again, it's that like tangible material, but I'm like, yeah, these are things that I could easily see on any given day. None of them are that are that unusual or special in and of themselves in that sense and also like I say the sense that it represents real people this is a very queer deck it's a very beyond the binaries deck that's its whole tagline and I think this deck also really does try to be very diverse in the people that it represents that feels more more real and that real life sense of earthiness like it's it's grounding like I said I'm like yeah this is this is a deck for real people and I love using this deck for other people for that same reason because I'm like yeah this deck is is not trying to be too too esoteric or too up in the clouds or too complicated like I love those decks we all have those decks I love those decks but I also love a deck that's just like this is real sometimes you need tarot for really mundane real life things and this deck speaks very well to that. I'm not saying this deck is mundane as in boring and I've used this deck in all kinds of readings but it just translates really easy because I'm like yeah this is this is a real deck this is representing the real the real world and the the elements that make up the real world so I don't want to end on the three of swords queen of pentacles fifth spirit tarot an earthy grounding deck for me. I actually was I had some time to pull some cards yesterday yesterday for the first time in well over a week because when I say I've been busy like I have not had 10 minutes at a time when I haven't been working on something so it was really nice to be able to to pull my grounding deck out and just just pull some cards for me and for my partner for the first time in what feels like forever so it really served its earthy purpose in that sense. The Russian Tarot of St. Petersburg is also in my earth deck 
selection. So this was one that I kind of grabbed on impulse and then had to figure out why I'd grabbed it. Whereas some of them, like I was thinking earthy decks, I immediately thought of the goddess of love. I immediately thought of the herb crafters. I immediately thought of a couple of others in this video, but it was when I was going through my deck, I was like, oh yeah, the Russian tower of St. Petersburg, that's an earth deck. And then I was like, okay, but why? <laughs> and when I was thinking about it, I realized it's because of and again, it's maybe a little bit of that Venusian influence in like Taurus, especially all of the embellishment, all of the decoration, like these beautiful borders, the fact that the artwork is just so gorgeous. And this also feels like a very cozy deck for me because of the black backgrounds. Like it feels like it's nighttime. I'm wrapped up. I've got my, my beautiful things around me. That I think is, is definitely the, the Taurus influence of the season is is picking out a lot of those elements but something about that is what feels earthy to me it feels like a good like home body deck so yeah very very Taurus and I'd be interested to see if anybody agrees but yeah we have the Russian Tower of St. Petersburg this is also like a Rido at Smith clone it's easy to read it's pretty straightforward you don't have to do too much translating it's it's a Rido at Smith system deck Right away, Smith, like easy readers in general, all feel quite earthy to me because they're like they're grounded, they're they're here to do a job, and they're the kind of decks that I can grab when I just like need to answer my questions. I need to use tarot in a very in a very straightforward way, or just in a very in a very practical way. That's the word. Rider Waite Smith clones are practical decks to me because the Rider Waite Smith Rider Waite Smithdom, the Rider Waite Smith system is the system I know best. So yes, Russian Tarot of Saint Petersburg is an earthy deck to me. It's a thing of beauty, but it's also practical, which I think is is Taurus definitely. I swear these decks aren't all Taurus decks. I just seem to have started with a lot of those. Speaking of not all these decks are Taurus decks, this is the Barbara Walker Tarot. And this feels like a Capricorn stereotype to me. In, and I have less experience with this deck than I do with, I think, any of the others that I'm pulling out for this video. I just have used this one less. But this feels like a bit of a Capricorn stereotype to me. Like, it's kind of a bitch. It's kind of bossy. It thinks it knows best, but like, it's probably right. <laughs> and like, I am, I am personifying this deck a little bit, but I feel like she's ambitious. She's kind of a bitch, but she does know what's best. I can only go to this deck when I genuinely do want my questions answered. This isn't the kind of deck where like, it's going to tell you what you want to hear. This deck is very much be careful what you wish for deck. Don't ask questions that you're not ready to have the answers to. That's this deck. It feels quite Capricorn. And again, it's very practical. It's, it's harsh. <laughs> it can be harsh. It can be mean, but it's practical. It gets the job done and it's not too worried about being super nice about it because that's not the goal. The goal is to get you your answers make your decisions and move the fuck on. So that is the Barbara Walker. All right, Tarot of the Crystal World. I'm not sure where the Oracle is, but I think that as a bonus would also come under this. But um, we have the Fool on top because I just did my favorite Fools video. And so the Tarot of the Crystal World, I'm not really sure if I can justify or explain this one. It just feels it's, it's Again, it's because it's so readable. There we go. I can justify and explain. It's because this is such a readable deck. It's practical. Ooh. Also, I think there is something about the color palette and the art style that also, if I was just classifying based on, on, on those things, on the aesthetic, I would call this an earth deck over, over anything else. There's something about it that it's that kind of comic style. Something about it feels a little bit not grungy, just not afraid to get its hands dirty, not afraid to do the work that needs doing. That's what this deck feels like. And so for that reason, it's a very earthy deck. Even though the world that it's set in, there's a lot of maybe almost like fantasy Western vibes, which isn't particularly realistic or reflective of the world that I live in. But despite that, it's still really, really down to earth. 
So yeah, Tower of the Crystal World. It's not afraid of the hard work, not afraid to get its hands dirty. And that is, that is earth to me. Okay, the Grimalkin's Curious Cat's Tarot by MJ Killinane. This is the mass market Hay House version. And this is maybe also a bit of a tourist deck because if anyone likes their creature comforts, it's a cat. And I know the tourist is a bull. Cats totally have that energy about them. They know what they want. They want to be comfortable. They want to be fed well. They want to sit in the sun. It's the side of tourists that likes their little indulgences and luxuries. That's a cat. This is also a beautiful deck. So again, Venus. But it's also very, it's lots of flowers. It's also outside. It's lots of natural things that this deck is beautiful in. Cats can also be really stubborn. I'm stuck on cats as the Taurus archetype here, but like cats can be stubborn as fuck. So that also I think really fits with Taurus. But um, yeah, this is an outdoorsy deck and the attitude of this deck is also very like, it's firm, but it's firm, but fair. It's not harsh. It's not unnecessarily rude. It's not mean, but it'll tell you the truth. So make sure that you want it. This isn't a deck that I use when I want nurturing particularly. Although all MJ Cullinane decks I do use when I'm feeling very in my feelings. But this one is also good for just giving me answers to my question. It's not one who's... If, if this deck had a priority, this deck's priority would be to just answer the damn question <laughs> whether I like it or not it's not too concerned with looking after me like that's my job you know so I don't know if that made sense but that is the Grimalkin's Curious Cats the penultimate deck in this selection is the Fyodor Pavlov Tarot this is the mass market US games version and again there's a theme there's a real theme to this video my earth decks are a beautiful be practical and this is such a practical deck it is a it's a Rider-Waite Smith clone I use the word clone very loosely um it's not like beat for beat in the imagery and the symbolism but it's not trying to do anything too radically different with how it portrays the meaning of each card it's beautiful it's an easy Rider-Waite Smith reader in my experience again it tells the truth it gives you the answers. It does the job you ask of it. This is not one of those decks that is too worried about telling me things nicely. This is another deck that trusts, trusts me, trusts the reader to handle their shit. You know, if you've got, if you're asking the, again, if you're asking the question, be prepared for the answer and be prepared, be prepared to look out for yourself sort of a thing. This deck will tell the truth and it's up to you what you do with that truth. It's also, like I say, it's absolutely beautiful. Most of my decks are beautiful, I think. I don't think I have any ugly decks, so it's probably a bit of a, a moot point to keep repeating that. There's nothing else to say. It's a practical, beautiful deck that tells the truth and doesn't really hold back. It's a kind of facts don't care about your feelings, which, as I say, I think like, oh, maybe that's a bit more Queen of Swords and a bit more airy. But I think it's, I think it's, I think it's more earthy because it's, it's the truth, it's the facts of the situation, it's the reality of the situation. It's not, it's not getting lost in the philosophy or the emotions of it. It's like, okay, what's actually happening? What is the real situation? How is it manifesting in reality? <laughs> So yeah, Fyodor Pavlov. And finally, last but not least, just last because it's the biggest box, so it's at the bottom of the stack, we have the Darkwood Tarot. This is a Llewellyn deck. It's illustrated by Abigail Larson, whose artwork I absolutely love. She's working on a vampire deck. Did I hear that? Is that true? I can't wait. Um, anyhow, that's upside down because it's a hangman. So this is the Darkwood Tarot. And I don't know quite why this feels earthy. Maybe it's just because it has wood in the title. And I don't know why I'm doing this upside down. Uh, maybe it's just because it has wood in the title. And so I'm thinking forest, I'm thinking earth in a very literal way. But I think, I think there's something more to it than that. But I don't think I can necessarily explain this one because this definitely does have a very magic fantasy vibe. It's got a very dark fairy tale vibe. 
there's witches, there's, I don't know, mermaids somewhere in here. Like there's a lot, there's a lot that is not super reality based. This is maybe more of like a shadow side of earth because it is that kind of dark fairy tale sort of energy. It does for earth to me and I'm afraid that's all I can give you. So if you agree with me, let me know why you think that is because this one is vibes, vibes only. And it definitely doesn't feel earth or air or water particularly to me. And not that a deck has to fall into an elemental category, but it does feel distinctly earthy. I love this two of swords. So that is the Darkwood Tarot. That is the final deck in this selection. I think I've had 10 decks. I keep throwing cards on the table. It's probably about time to wrap things up. All right, that is all of my Earthy Vibes decks for Taurus season and beyond. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know if you agree with my choices. Let me know what decks you have or think are Earthy decks or if you've got any for any particular zodiac sign, any earthy zodiac sign. I didn't mention Virgo anywhere. I think a lot of that is the is the practicality of a lot of these decks. That feels very Virgo, that like practical, get the job done, stop faffing about, that kind of Virgo energy. So anyhow, thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far, I really hope you have enjoyed. Give me a like if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.